Good evening. So we're all here because maybe of a connection, and I hope we're all going to go away with a few more connections. As educators, we see the importance of being social, connecting, pushing our thinking in order to extend our learning. So I'm here to sh today to share something with you. I'm going to share something with you here. Oh, I might want to get a slide up. Okay. So I'm going to share a film with you. And when you know what this film is, it might trigger some personal memories. Please call out if you think you know what this is. <laughs> yes, it is that wonderful, wonderful, feel-good movie where the young Kevin Bacon arrives from the city into a town where music and dancing has been banned. But his rebellious spirit, he's really passionate, and he connects with all those students. And, oh, there's a bit of a spoiler alert here. Is there anybody here who hasn't seen this film? Um, at the very end, he gets all his senior students together, and they dance the night away at the prom. And here's a little bit of a snippet of what that kind of looks like. Do you know when this film came out? Last year. <laughs> 1984. And if some of you haven't seen that film, just go and ask your mum. <laughs> now, some of you might have heard of the theory of the six degrees of separation. And this was originally talked about in a short story in Hungarian, translated into English. The English version of this title is Chains. I'm not going to say the Hungarian version. And it was written in 1929 by this Hungarian, and his name was Karinthi. And I probably said it all wrong. Um, Pronounce.com didn't quite tell me the pronunciation. Anyway, he posits that any two people on Earth are no more than six acquaintances apart. Now, some guys were watching Footloose. And they loved Kevin Bacon, and they realized what a celebrity that he was. And they came up with the Kevin Bacon game. And I don't know if do any of you know this game? Yeah. 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 So basically, the game is this. Um, they said there is no more, because Kevin's such a celebrity, there is no more than six degrees of separation between Kevin and another celebrity. So here's an example. There's the lovely Kevin, just about to do that iconic warehouse dance in Footloose. Remember that? <laughs> and there's the very beautiful Meryl Streep. Now, do you know how many degrees of separation there are between these two? Any ideas? Three. Three? No, 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 no. Five. No, no. One. One. Who said one? Do you know what the connection is? No, <laughs> yeah, she was in the background. Did you see her? <laughs> um, actually, it's this wonderful film, The River Wild. And that came out in 1994. And if you haven't seen that film either, just go ask your mum. So people are still playing the Kevin, Ga the Kevin Bacon game. And Google picked up on this in 2012. And Google sometimes sends out these, uh, creates these little Easter eggs, these whimsical tools that they kind of hide and people discover. And they sent out this tweet in September 2012. They had made this new thing, a new tool called the Bacon Number. Okay? Makes it so much easier to play the game. So, for example, in Google, in the search box, all you need to do is write the celebrity's name followed by Bacon Number and it tells you their bacon number. So for example, Tom Hanks, his bacon number is one, because he was in Apollo 13 with um, Kevin Bacon. Now, Kate Winslet, do you know who she is? I've just asked your mother otherwise. Okay, Kate Winslet, what's her bacon number? Hmm? Two, who said two? Any idea what those connections are? Well, it is two. She and Bill Paxton win Titanic, and he was in Apollo 13 with Kevin Bacon. Actually, the Bacon number is a byproduct of the Google's knowledge graph that came out in 2012. And that's that thing 
on that side, the left-hand side of the screen. And what it is, is that when people go to search for something like Kevin Bacon, they go through all the search history of people looking for Kevin Bacon and see who they connected to. And then they aggregate all that into a graph, so it makes it so much easier for you to make connections. So that's Kevin Bacon's a knowledge graph. And it doesn't just happen for people, it happens in things too. So this is the Facebook one here. And talking of Facebook, I think I'm Facebook friends with quite a few of you here, yeah? That means that I'm one degree of separation between you and me. It means I'm two degrees of separation between you, me, and your friends. And three degrees of separation between me and your friends' friends. Now, I reckon that some of you have got some really cool friends who've got equally cooler friends, and I suspect that in this conference right here, right now, we could probably connect to Kevin Bacon in less than six degrees of separation through Facebook. I'm supposed to laugh there. <laughs> so, we're not all celebs, and um, so the Bacon number doesn't work for us. But there is a tool where we do have a similar Bacon number. It's called LinkedIn. And when you connect to LinkedIn and sign up, you can just type somebody's name in the search bar, and it might tell you how many degrees of separation you are from that. So I thought I'd try this out, and I thought I'd try a couple of people from this school. And I tried this one. Guess what? The lovely Chris. I'm only two degrees of separation away from you, Chris. And guess who our connector is, Chris? Yes, Simon May. <laughs> First degree of separation. Okay. We are all connected virtually already through this Hoover app. Okay, so we're all connected uh, virtually through Hoover. And I hope by the end of this conference we will have a lot more connections face to face. So what has this got to do with our learners? I think we all know that learning becomes far more meaningful and is retained far longer when people make connect emotional connections to it but sometimes we get those connections wrong. For example, I was at a conference, and I went to somebody's workshop, and they were unpacking their PhD, and they decided to make it a lot more simple for us by um, using the Lord of the Rings, um, met a metaphor of the Lord of the Rings. Now, you might be shocked to hear this, but I do know there's somebody else also here. I have never read Lord of the Rings, nor have I seen any of the movies, so I was completely I know, I know, I'm a really sad person, I'm sorry. I will go and watch it tonight and talk to you about it tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, I realised that I was so lost at the end of this workshop, and I thought, how many times have I talked to my kids and got really cool examples which were completely, completely meaningless to them? Now, at our school at Western Academy of Beijing, we have a lot of self-directed initiatives, and I'm very lucky to be piloting an initiative for a handful of our grade 11 students. They do some regular classes, but 20% of their high school time they spend following their own passion and building their own learning journey. And each journey is unique. Now, I don't have a 1980s footloose dancer yet, but I do have a student who's very passionate about programming and gaming. And my job is not to teach him, but in the immortal words of Kenny Loggins, is to kick off my Sunday shoes and cut him loose and let him get on with his own learning. So here are some of the connections that we've made. First of all, he has a sort of internship with Microsoft, okay? It's a, it's a virtual um, internship, and sometimes he goes to their offices. A couple of weeks ago, he went along to their offices, and he went, participated in a bug bash. Okay, anybody know what one of those is? You do? Great, I hope I've got this right. Okay, so what he did was they set up a scenario, and they used Office 365, and I think they were testing out um, um, PowerPoints, collaborative features, and they set up the scenario, and they all came into the room, and they tried to break it and to find the bugs, and that's what's called a bug bash, and that was really cool, and our student was really, really thought that was fantastic, and he came back and told all, all our kids. Okay, another connection we've made, all of us, I hope, are lifelong learners. I'm doing a, 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 um, an MED in innovation, and I'm re-teaching myself, or I'm learning how to program again, and I'm learning Java. 
So I said to my student, why don't you kind of like follow along with me? No, he's not actually doing all my work for me, okay? But I can tell you it's a wonderful experience actually learning alongside your students, and I love that. A third connection that we've made is we have a grade three student who's absolutely passionate about the history of gaming. So we've connected these two together. My student sometimes goes down to the elementary school or he comes up to the high school. I don't know what they talk about. None of us know what they talk about, but they're obviously making some really great connections. I think we know that technology has been a game changer. It's changed the way that we create, we store, and we access information. Nowhere is the new know what. And I think we know that many of our students have passed us by in pursuit of their own learning and making their own connections. And I offer that maybe your students, like my students, have two or many go-to places for their learning. These two happen to be two of them that the students go to on their own. And some might argue, as educators, we are redundant. But I would argue that we are absolutely the opposite. I see with my students that my role is to be the learning concierge, the guide, the guide that helps them find their connections, make the dif find the difference between good and bad connections, so they can find connections that are helpful, that are meaningful, and really push their learning. Exploration leads to discovery. My question to you is this. Are you willing to cut loose? Are you willing to allow your kids to become those footloose learners? And do you know what? One of them might find Kevin Bacon in their pursuit of learning. And I think what we've all been waiting for is this.